So if you're looking at the title of this video, you're probably thinking, another fire cape. This guy is insane. This is all he does. And you're right, I am insane. But it's not all I do. It's about 99% of what I do. I completed a level 3 fire cape almost four years ago now, but it's just not perfect. As in, they came out with the level 3 high scores, and I'm 3 defense, so I don't even show up there. I basically was required to get 3 defense in order to complete the fight caves back then, with the method of having to poison some of the 180s based on where they were spawning inside the fight caves and wasting XP poisoning each of those, with the exception of around 8 which I actually used a weird elemental shield along with a melee tiki to overcome. And although my level 3 has many unique items and decent skills on it, it does not have Priest and Peril done. So this level 3 was lacking, it doesn't have all the perks it could have as well as it doesn't even show up on the level 3 high scores. I want to make a real level 3 that's going to show up on those high scores and can showcase some unique boss kills as well as stats on that high score table. But I don't want to do that unless I can get a fire cape, and today's video is going to be exploring methods of possibly overcoming a zero combat XP fire cape, as well as just the progress of yet another account. We're still in a long hiatus for the Defense Pure Iron Man series because I'm going on another super long grind for that, kind of like the Iron Dragons for the Visage, so that could be even months to come until the next video is out. Therefore, once again, I'm sorry, rinse due, but there's some unique things that I would hope 99.999% of you have never heard about inside of this game that's going to be showcased on today's video. But I hope 100% of you have heard about today's sponsor, Manscaped. I'm hyped to share Manscaped's products today because if you can't tell already, well, I need them. So why don't you level up your facial grooming game with me and keep yourself looking sharp? Manscaped has two new incredible grooming tools, the Beard Hedger, which is a beard trimmer, and the new Handyman, which is a compact face shaver if you like keeping things more close. This Handyman here is the ultimate compact face shaver, and it's designed for precision and convenience. It's wireless, has skin-safe technology, has an advanced dual blade, which will knock down up to three days worth of growth. The second product here, the Beard Hedger, is my personal favorite with its 20 different length settings ranging from 0.5mm to 10mm, and there's a convenient zoom wheel to change those without having to slide up and down. Both of these grooming tools have a battery life of 60 minutes and are waterproof. So what are you waiting for? Upgrade your facial grooming routine today with me. Visit manscaped.com and use the code RENDY20 at checkout and get 20% off your purchase of the Handyman and the Beard Hedger from Manscaped. So I had this account that did complete Priest and Peril and was level 3. It also completed Firmament Trials later on, but other than that I've never touched anything else on this account. This is probably the only account with both of these quests done, much less Priest and Peril, but that is 3 combat as well as has 1 in all combat stats, therefore it actually shows up on the level 3 high scores. Along with this, I was thinking I could go for pets even easier. I could go for a Theater of Blood pet. I could even be the only level 3 Iron Man on the high scores with Theater of Blood kill count much less, as no one has done this yet, for obvious reasons. I could go for a Raccoon, the Rocky pet, from Thieving Stalls in the Firmament Trials area. Since I have the quest done, there's just all kinds of opportunities on this level 3 that a normal level 3 would not have. I mean, we're even talking about miscellaneous access for clue steps and a lot more that I can't even think of at this current moment. But once again, I don't want to play this account long term unless it has a fire cape, so I'm going to be exploring further into the possible methods for achieving that without any combat XP later on. But first, I just had to log into this account and get some unique items to show off the account's unique status, of course. So I went and started Fremenic Isles, got the gesture gear right off the bat, was able to wear all of it and look like a straight up clown, then I went over to Mortania, tried to start Nature Spirit, but once again, as I believe I showed in my fifth video on the Defense Pier, you can no longer start Nature Spirit quest without Restless Ghost completed entirely. You used to be able to start and finish the whole quest with just a Ghost Speak amulet, but since I made that video for some reason, now you can't even start the quest and therefore I could not get a blessed silver sickle, but I was able to get a wolfbane from Drezzle, which isn't quite as good. I mean, it's kind of hidden. It's so freaking small, but I'm gonna rock that thing to show off Mortania's status. As well, I'm gonna grab a coffin backpack. You can get this by talking to Maximus Rex. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> over near <laughs> over near the shades of morton area there's less than like a handful of players that even have this backpack at level three combat as well literally none that are able to go back and get whatever color they want besides myself because i can free walk around mortania and yeah talk to this guy talk to anyone by the way i can also get combat achievements up very fast because I do have Theater of Blood access once again, so I can actually achieve the hard combat achievements on a level 3 much easier and much quicker than any other level 3 can. Okay, that's enough of me talking about and flexing on every other level 3 skiller out there who's probably going to hate me after this video, but I'm going to go ahead and get into what I looked into and the possible methods of achieving a level 3 fire cape without having to get 3 defense this time, and preferably with 0 combat XP. So first of all, Oh, fuck, what was I even gonna say? So first of all, I went in on a main to test a lot of things with the 180s, possibly do some wanky... Possibly... <laughs> possibly do some... <laughs> possibly attempting to do some wacky shit like stalling whenever the 180s is supposed to heal himself. Kind of like how when Glod was healing himself, I was able to stall on that cycle and stop him from using his heal. I thought, you know, maybe this would work as well with the 180s. Obviously not though, because I was even stalling in the previous level 3 fire cape attempt while attacking the 180 and he was clearly healing himself. I don't know, man. I just need this 180 to stop healing itself, so... I was trying everything. I was even like releasing toy mice on the ground and I found out weirdly enough doing this that a toy mouse stops NPCs uh, temporarily and so I could just like safe spot the 180s and range them on this test account. But yeah, that wasn't very helpful and pretty much in every scenario the 180s kept healing themselves. Although getting the 180s in safe spotable areas where I could utilize other NPCs might be helpful and releasing toy mice at the start of a wave whenever I do a lure could stop some NPCs from moving in certain spots and allow for me to possibly relure waves and position NPCs in an entirely different way than they're meant to be set up for that specific wave. That is because the current and old method for mitigating some of the wave's XP with the 180s was based around how the 180s spawn near other NPCs, taking down the other NPC's health below half so the 180 healed that NPC rather than itself whenever it was below half and then completing the wave in a really difficult format which would take about an hour to kill one singular 180. So the second idea I had was, well how can I poison a 180 without any combat XP needed to do that because if I can poison these things and then just stand back they'll die to poison the problem is once again you're sacrificing defense XP and a lot of it to get through all the 180s throughout these waves as they will heal themselves under half HP if you are in direct combat with them so yeah poisoning without XP well the only way to do that is with poison dynamite unfortunately when they released poison dynamite though one of the only places they excluded poison dynamite from working in was the fight caves. You are not supposed to be able to use the poison dynamite whatsoever on any of these monsters in the fight caves, and you get this game chat message if you try to do so. But poison dynamite also works in a 3x3 area based on where you light it on the ground. You don't always have to just use directly poison dynamite on the NPC, and you don't have to actually light the poison dynamite from your inventory, but you can. There's another way to light poison dynamite, and that is simply dropping it on the ground like you would sometimes a log, then using your tinderbox on that poison dynamite. And for some reason, Two methods of lighting the poison dynamite in the fight caves didn't work, but this third one did. So actually, yes you can use poison dynamite in the fight caves I found out. And this was huge, but not really because poison dynamite, unlike the original one in the beta that was supposed to roll off your fire making level, they weren't able to code it this way. And instead, it rolls off the combat stat you're using, being range or melee, as well as your bonuses in that stat. Being a level three, I'm one everything, and I have very few items to choose from for accuracy bonus. Also, Poison Dynamite is not stackable, so I would have a maximum of 28 minus Purple Sweets, of course, and many other items, possible chances to get a Poison hit off on the 180s. There is a lot of 180s in this fight cave, and my accuracy is terrible. I probably could not even poison one of them with 28 Poison Dynamites because their defense level is high and my attack level is low. But I was still amazed to see that you can poison dynamite NPCs in the fight caves when it was entirely not supposed to be possible, and simply by just using an alternate method 
of lighting the poison dynamite. I'm not sure how this wasn't like coded in, but yeah, sometimes it's the simplest things you can find that are the craziest. And if I ever want a zero combat XP fire cape, well, this is the route I'm going to have to look into. And fortunately, there are some past experiences I have observed which might allow for me to bank in the fight caves. Yeah, you heard that right. Banking in the fight caves for even more poison dynamite and basically an endless chance to hit every 180 on every wave. So all I know now is that I at least need as much poison dynamite as possible and that means as much cave nightshade as possible to make that poison dynamite. Thankfully there's a new type of nightshade that's stackable so I could just get the normal dynamite banked and then put the nightshade into that to make the poison dynamite. But I need 63 farming to get this type of stackable nightshade and therefore I'm going to be farming for the first levels and do some quests as well to optimize my farm runs and tree runs and eventually even go for 99 farming to just harvest more of those stackable nightshades from the belladonna plant. So that's what I did, I completed enlightened journey for optimal tree routes, did a lot of farming runs daily, and eventually got 80 farming as well as some nightshades, and even if my banking plan, which I'll mention here in a second, doesn't work, I'll have a bunch of nightshades that I can still use for poison dynamite, as I'll be using poison dynamite for so many things on a level 3 account. Okay, so speaking on banking in fight caves. Back in 2014 when I was still going for lowest level fire capes, because once again that's all I do, I had a friend look into the fight caves for me and actually use the monster examine spell from the lunar spellbook to see all the stats of the NPCs because this was back before they even posted that kind of thing on the runescape wiki. So for his first run into the fight caves I had him just get all of the NPC stats up to the 180s and then leave the fight caves. He then AFK logged out and whenever he logged back in he noticed he was back on the 180 wave even though he still had Tockle in his inventory from the previous attempt kind of confirming that he had left the fight caves, but was put back inside. I was kind of skeptical this even happened the first time and thought maybe our minds are just playing tricks on us and that, you know, maybe he had the tackle from a previous attempt to that. But then I had him go back in to get the 360 stats, which I decided I needed as well just to confirm that everything doubles. He went up to the 360 waves this time, left yet again, and then logged out, logged in again, went to bank, logged out again near the entrance, and he ended up back in the fight caves for a second time. Yes, this meant he logged out, wasn't put in the fight caves, then logged out again and logged back in, and then was put in the fight caves. Whenever he logged back in as well, he was put back into the 360 wave he had previously left. And I was so hyped at this time because this was even before Ring of Suffering, and I was thinking, wow, you could bank for recoils between waves and log out and log back in to get back to your previous wave and basically have infinite recoils. Later that would happen anyways, but now once again I needed a method of banking not for recoils, but for poison dynamite. I was so obsessed with this occurrence that immediately following it I spent around 12 hours trying to repeat it to no success. I would also go on weird binges where I would try this bug multiple times throughout the years for sometimes even upwards of 8 hours a day as you would have to wait around 3 minutes before each fight caves entry to retest a theory. I will mention that around this time they added the right click escape option to the exit of the fight caves door which allowed you to leave instantly rather than try and go through a dialogue whenever monsters were attacking you. And although I never figured it out at this time, I'm thinking that possibly this had something to do with it as maybe it was an unregistered leave. When you leave an area and it's unregistered, the game still thinks you're basically in that area. There was actually a perfect example of this in 2009 which you could find back on old forums of people using the newly added home teleport spell to teleport out of fight caves and then running back to the door entrance, re-logging, then appearing back on the previous wave. There literally used to be a confirmed banking method inside of fight caves past 2007 but still likely with the same kind of mechanics. That's how people back in the day were even able to smuggle familiars in the fight caves like this clip here, but none of the videos actually showed the step-by-step -step process until it was leaked later in this forum post. And I was kind of confused as to why this even worked and why he needed to be back by the door until I came across another find years and years later. There used to be a log in force teleport from Temple Trekking if you were to leave there with an unregistered leave, such as an unregistered teleport that was newly added to the game. One of these recently was the Ring of Elements on release. It was not a registered method of leaving an area. So you could teleport out with a Ring of Elements and then you could run back near the entrance of Temple Trekking 
and log back in and it would put you back inside tipple tricking. And I was really just wondering why this happened and why you needed to be back by the starting coordinates of any side of tipple trekking in order to get back inside of it. I later figured out this was because whenever you hold the click here to play menu up and you log back into a tempo trek, it puts you outside of the trek as the starting coordinate tiles. Some instances are like this where it puts you right outside the entrance area and some instances where you log back into put you in the northeast or southeast area of the original instance mapping which is north of the main game's map. Sometimes it'll even put you in a void in the middle of nowhere that's shared, such as the void from Raids 1 I found out was actually shared with the relog from Inferno, as I can see my own account relogging in Inferno whenever I'm voided out here from the Chambers of Zarek. When relogging in Chambers of Zarek or Inferno, there's a quick stall that shows you where you're voided first, then it puts you back into the instance you were in. With temple trekking, it's just a click here to play menu, you click here to play, and on the next tick, it will basically put you into the trek, so you had no idea unless someone else was looking at you, that you were even outside. Now in fight caves though, there's not a click here to play menu, no stall, nothing. Your client doesn't even load tick 0, it instantly loads into tick 1, and you're in the middle of your fight cave instance. It's almost like it's a magic trick. I did some investigating on this and some old videos in 2006 on Relog had you actually click the click here to play option before putting you back into the wave you had last logged out in. So if we were in 2006, we could have likely just seen our account outside the start of the fight caves whenever it relogged, as long as the click here to play menu was still open. But there is still one tick, although I can't see it on my client end, that I should be placed in a position to load into the new instance, and if that's still outside the entrance of the fight caves, I'll be able to see it on my other account. Unfortunately, I did not see a white dot for a tick log into the outside entrance of the fight caves. Even if it was invisible, I feel like I would be able to see it on my minimap and nothing was there. But maybe the start tile for the singular tick before loading into the instance wasn't even the tile right outside the entrance of the fight caves. Maybe it was somewhere else entirely, but somehow the relog near the door like we saw in the 2009 example still somehow worked. And I say this because whenever testing temple checking, I found out you could be in a 40 by 40 tile area from the actual start tile where you log in at, and it'll still put you back into the trek on relog. So maybe as long as I'm 40 tiles away diagonally, north or south, from that starting tile, wherever it is, I can then possibly relog within that zone and still get put inside the fight caves. Maybe it's actually in the mapping of fight caves itself, which you can see here to the north inside Tizar City, as this is the layout from the main game, which it will take to load into an instance. Maybe somewhere in that fight cave is where I'm positioned whenever I relog for a tick before thrown into the actual instance. But how would I know the exact tile of wherever I'm actually relogged for the first tick of the game? Because I can only see white dots and other players 15 tiles away from each other. After that, it just no longer renders. This means I would somehow have to see this on my personal client for that singular first zero tick logging in. So how would I be able to see during that singular tick that's not rendered where I'm actually at and what tiles I'm on before it throws me into the instance? Because I would need to make sure that I'm still on a tile and this hasn't been changed, that's at least 40 tiles from a possible relog spot. Well, I would need a forced stall into the login that would prioritize over the movement of my character into the actual instance on the second tick of the game. I had luckily found a login stall as well as interface many years ago in my Lower the Better video where I first took on Barrow's Gloves. I found this inside the quest, Forgettable Tale of a Drunken Dwarf, where actually if you unregistered leave from that area through a death, because for some reason death isn't coded as a leave in that area as there's no NPCs or combat, you could then actually take that as a login stall whenever you log out and log back in because it logs you in thinking you're still in that area, throws you into a stall, and then interfaces you into some dwarf dialogue. So to test the coordinates and to see what they actually were, I went ahead on a main account did forgettable tale up until the part wherever you get in the minecart room, simply killed my account from there being an unregistered leave from that specific area, then went to the fight caves, completed a wave, and re-logged. As you can see, the stall here kind of distorts your character as it is confused as to where you are and realizes you're not in the dwarf instance, but I could then see for about two ticks the actual coordinates of where I was loading in from before that invisible gap in time where I'm just teleported instantaneously into the instance coordinates. So my prediction was right. I am less than 40 tiles out from some locations, but not all of them. I do spawn exactly in the middle of the layout map north of Tizar City, according to these coordinates on my screen. 
meaning I'm not yet in the instance during the first tick of the game, and it loads me in from the middle of the fake instance before putting me in the real one. I know, right? All of that just to figure out some tile coordinates. But now I can measure out a 40 by 40 area and possibly see where I could stand to relog if I can find an unregistered leave from fight caves. There was only one real area that was in the 40 by 40 range diagonal to the southwest of the fight cave layout from that middle tile coordinate. And that was right before the entrance to the center part of Moor El Rec. Technically, I should be able to relog and still be in the 40 by 40 range, but just barely. Everywhere else was blocked by walls and it definitely was not next to the fight cave entrance. My prediction was either one, it used to load you in at the entrance of the fight caves and that's why it worked during this time period. It was later corrected maybe in 2015 after we experienced this. Or two, maybe they just changed the tile range from the coordinate from say 60 to 40, and that's why maybe it worked before at the entrance to the fight caves, and now it does not. Now you might be saying maybe it hasn't worked for you over the years because you haven't had a proper unregistered leave. Maybe the escape on the door was just an unregistered leave from the fight caves, but for that singular hour that your friend experienced it in, and after that it was corrected. Like the home teleport on its release in 2009 was an unregistered leave from Fight Caves as well. Now I didn't record this, but there was another unregistered leave that recently had happened with the Desert Treasure 2 rings, and I had a friend who had this quest done test this theory with that teleport. And I knew it was an unregistered leave because it was an unregistered leave from literally every other area you could teleport in. So I had him take this ring which was an unregistered teleport, teleport out of Fight Caves, go back to the front of the door without using any other teleports to get there, then re-log at like 20 different locations near the door. As once again you can re-log again and again as long as you find the true tile and then it'll put you back in through different logouts. None of these worked because once again they were more than 40 tiles out. Maybe they changed it from 50 or 60 to 40 and that's why it no longer worked. But this unregistered leave had been fixed soon after the update. The ring from Desert Treasure 2 no longer worked the way it did with unregistered leaves and I needed a new unregistered leave, possibly one a level 3 could even use. And that simply was running out of membership. Yeah, running out of membership to this day is still an unregistered leave. I don't know how this has not been fixed, but that's how people are still getting the blue circle out of Soul Wars and putting it under their body. They're literally just going in the tutorial of Soul Wars, then waiting for their membership to run out, then logging into an F2P world in Lumbridge, and bam, it's there. Anyways, the same concept worked with Fight Caves. I was basically going to get two-day membership codes, let those run out between the waves so I could bank for more Poison Dynamite, as I could log back into F2P Lumbridge, which was an unregistered leave, then make sure I did no more teleports, walked all the way back to Tizar City, and then finally stood in this new area I found that was less than 40 tiles from the center of the layout where you spawn in, rather than probably the earlier 50 or 60 tiles from the coordinate they had marked before which once again was that super specific area marked here southwest of the center of the fight caves. If the 40 by 40 tile range surrounding the start tile was true like it was in Temple Trekking on Relog, then this should technically put me back in the fight caves where I could manually drop poison dynamite then light it with a tinder box to use it on the NPCs that you're not even supposed to be able to use it on and then bank between waves for more poison dynamite and finally complete the fight caves on a level 3 with zero combat XP. And... I'll leave it at that. Thank you all for watching, I'll see you next time, and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you enjoy watching bizarre niche RuneScape videos such as this.